enough experience to be selling toys, so we're not gonna let you sell toys during the highest toy demand period of the year. That's right, no, you cannot sell any toys, but after December 26, we'll let you sell toys again. Yep, I actually found that little booger. Couldn't believe it. I don't know if I got that as a perk, but I'm almost certain I got that at an eBay conference. But anywho, it's almost the end of the month. This is the deal. You've got until May 31st to take advantage of the three book deal for $9.95 or to get the bridge fee to be included in iBuyIProfit.com, which will launch June 15th. At that point, it's going to go up to 250 bucks. That's what I feel it's worth. You can always buy the three book deal anytime, any place for $99.95, but it will not include access to the new deal. Just letting you know now. And with that, on to the video. This is Glenn with Making Money with Storage Unit Auctions. The title of this video, eBay, the early days. Sitting around, just thinking, okay, it's a weekend, it's a holiday weekend. And I remember my first eBay holiday weekend because there was a lot of decisions like, well, it's a holiday. People are, are they going to buy or they're not going to buy? Should I work? And actually, some of this conversation happened the week before because if you do eBay, you know, you've got your seven day, five day, three day, one day auctions. And used to, at that point, used to run seven day auctions. So it was the weekend and I took a shot at it and made a gamble. And just loaded up the ID, just loaded up everything. I was just sitting around watching, and then that Sunday was just bananas. It was ridiculous. I don't know if it's still like that because I outsourced our eBay stuff in 2006. And with the outsource, I started looking at different metrics. You know, I used to be all into, I used to be, I know strangely enough, as bad as I talk about eBay, the just I was an eBay fool. I was in love with eBay. My partner was just like, eBay, eBay, you're just in love with eBay. And that's before they <laughs> smacked me down. I was a total advocate. I was like, eBay's the best thing. I went to the conferences. I even got like an eBay keychain around here. And at one point, I had all my little power seller certificates. But that weekend, it just showed me a lot. Because the thing is, you have to prepare for this stuff. Because... I had never shipped out that much stuff the week after in my life. Never. Sold 90 things on that Sunday. And at that time, it was a lot. It was a tremendous amount of stuff because our sell-through rate was roughly 28 to 32 percent. Now, if you don't know what a sell-through rate is, it's how much stuff you have up posted on eBay and how much of it actually sells in a seven-day period. And I used to track that information. And the reason I'm doing this video is I hear a lot of people and let me just make the statement. I believe if you are a reseller, whether it's picking storage auctions, estate sales, garage sales, eBay is a necessary evil. That's just my opinion based on my experience. But I don't know of any other place or any other portal on the planet that you can get the type of coin you can from some of the craziest stuff that you can on eBay, even today. I don't know of any other place. But with that, once again, there was some more thought process of this, and when I said I loaded up the eBay ID, I went bananas because before the holiday came, I was doing, you know, I'm always trending stuff and analysis. I was always looking at that stuff. And I looked at the last three month sales, and at that point, it was 28%. 28% of what we had up would sell. And I was like, okay, well, it's a holiday, and I had hit some really nice units, had a lot of stuff to put up, and just went bananas. And also, part of doing eBay is, many people have no idea how much work it is. Because I'm not trying to be demeaning or insulting, but if you put up 20, 30 items a month, you don't know. Because that was the genesis of better things to come because I learned so much from that process but that trended you know what our sales were and I said okay so if I want to do more money we need to put up more stuff and you know the thought process is add a few more items or double what you're doing I didn't do that no 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 oh I went crazy and I put up 
five times as much stuff. Note the numbers. 90 items sold on that Sunday. We were typically selling 10 to 15 a week. So I put five, five times as much stuff and still had the same sell through rate of 28%. But because there was more stuff up, there was more money. Also, with more money, there's more problems to coin the old rap song. Because as you in scale up with your business, the number of nut cases, disgruntled buyers, PayPal disputes also increase. And that's when I really started like bumping heads with PayPal and eBay. Because that particular weekend, nothing happened. 90 sales went down, about 80% of the people paid instantly. Send them their stuff, they left positive feedback. Really, out that whole bunch, there was maybe two people who were a little cranky. And when I was like a little cranky, I just gave them a little money off. They went away, they left positive feedback, and life was all well in the village. But during that process of putting up five times as much stuff, I had to change my eBay methodology. Because, you know, this is the way that I used to work. I would take a picture, this was way back in the day, take a picture load up the pictures, do the description, and launch the ad. Then this whole process taught me about eBay platforms such as InkFrog, there was a channel advisor, there was all kinds of stuff out there. But I went with InkFrog because it was the cheapest and it was the easiest to use. So this was my first run in with InkFrog. And I had to, like I said, change everything up. So I took pictures of everything, but as I took a picture, I wrote down a quick description because you do better when you group up your activity. So it's like picture, 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 but a little description, one, you know, number, pot, this pot's this, this, this. And even with that, I still had to go back on some of the items because, you know, once you load the pictures, you're like, oh, gonna, oh, damn, I forgot about that. Because if you know eBay, if it has a scratch that's one inch long, it is not good enough to put, it's a scratch. You must put, it's a scratch. It's one inch long and it's on the left side of the pot toward the bottom near the curve. Because <laughs> if you leave any of that out there, go like, no, I am not as described. <sighs> anyway, so I went through all that process and it was real frustrating and it was very time consuming because I was breaking myself in to a new paradigm. Just totally, just totally breaking myself in. And I got a headache and it was just like really, really crazy. But like I said, this was the genesis of better things to come because going through that weekend and preparing for the holiday, I learned so much about my eBay business because I thought I knew a lot. And I was like, whoa, this is a way to crank out more money. This is why I say, sure, as a picker, you have more control and you, you could choose not to go out there and buy some or you can't and you really, but in terms of making killer money and just for the de my definition of killer money and your definition of killer money could be completely different but for the sake of this conversation my definition of killer money from your resale business was 10k that was my definition and those 90 items on that one sunday generated 3900 bucks which was more money than we had made all month in that one week of ebay and that's what i said it was the genesis of the business and better things to come because it was like whoa I was like, whoa! It was like, you know, PayPal was like rich, you know, it was just like, and I had, oh, and if you have a PayPal account, get the, get the PayPal debit card. I know people with PayPal accounts and they don't have the debit card. And I'm like, why? You can get 400 bucks out. And that's helped me out at times at the auctions because I like, I ran out of cash, but I knew we were going somewhere. And I was like, I need just a little bit more cash and I didn't want to go to the bank. And also, you know, insert tip. You know, you can only get like, depending on your bank, 400, 500, 600 bucks out of the ATM. So if you have three accounts, you can get 1,200, 1,500, or 1,800 cash. Now, a lot of 20s is freaking that thick. Anyway, so get the PayPal debit card. And like I said, going back, learn a lot from the business. And at that point, our business just transformed. Because what started off as an experiment based on gathering analysis and trending actually became the norm. Because it's like, because my partner saw the results and she was like, we need to do that every week. <laughs> and because we did it on a holiday and really got paid, and understand, back in the day, 3900 bucks on the auction trail was a grip. You can get you 20, 30 units with that. And I, I went crazy. I was buying units. People were like, wow, he's got a lot of freaking... And that's when people started to notice. It's like, hey, he came up kind of quick. 
And that was how I was able to defeat the whales, the big dogs, the old heads, whatever, because many of them selectively used eBay and did not have a system and put all that stuff together the way that we did. And what I'm saying to you is if you're not making as much money on eBay as you want to, understand uh, dancing with eBay is like swimming with a piranha. I totally get it. You know, it's like that's why I did the video eBay the route snake in your business. I understand. But until something better comes along, it's a necessary evil. And I even got to a point where I hated eBay, to the point where I didn't list shit anymore. And so I feel you because you can literally work your ass off to the nub and have nothing messing around with eBay because part of that is on you. Yeah, I know that hurt, but you, you got to do your research because if you just re listing a bunch of crap that doesn't sell, that's on you. That ain't on eBay. That's on you. You don't know your market. You don't know your customers and you're not sourcing the right inventory. Once again, that's all on you. But once you get this stuff together, you can make really good money on eBay. And the thing is, once again, a demeaning moment is about to happen because, you know, I've talked to people. And I've learned that you have to have certain conversations in the right context with certain people. Because when I go off and like say, hey, you know, I had these problems with PayPal, invariably you get these people. I have been a PayPal seller for six years and I never had a problem. Okay, how many items do you sell a month? 10, 15, 20. Then I'm like, you know, I've actually done that in an hour. So many things in an hour. When we were really cranking, we've done that in an hour or two hours yet, which you do in a week or a month. That's the difference there. Once again, more money, more problems, more higher volume, more junk, more stuff, more crap. And that's what, you know, I want to teach you. When you talk to people and you talk about your business, you know, I learned this from one of my mentors, ask enough of the right questions so you're having the conversation in the proper context because... It's just like, you know, when two people say the word love. There's for one person, when they say love, it's this deep, personal, super emotionally charged feeling. For other folks, hey, I love cookies. Which means, you know, if they ain't there, I ain't upset. Because to me, they're properly using the word, but that's their, you know, language. That's how they use stuff. And you have to have the proper context conversation with these people so you can arrive at the same meaning. Because many people use the same word and there's two different contexts and that's why communication actually sucks. But have the proper context conversation with people for your business. Ask a lot of questions and be a data junkie. Because right now there are people who are in the resale business and their eBay ID wasn't loaded up for this weekend. It wasn't. And they're like, I'll do it later. And then there are other people who are veterans because I'm going to tell you holidays are killer days for online sales the day after Christmas is bananas it's actually better than the days up before Christmas just it just is uh, Thanksgiving Day Thanksgiving night pff, another killer day for online sales so you have to crawl in your business and root around and dig up the data because see the thing is I get all these questions and people are going well Glenda did it once again, proper context. My business was growing. I had experience. I had a partner. If it's just you and Boo Boo, your dog, I can give you enough information where you put you in the right direction. But, you know, is, is that cookie cutter stuff is not going to work because that's the beauty of the resale business. You can create your business to suit you. But once again, it takes that W word, work. And that E word, effort, and that D word, diligence, and consistency. And another thing with this space is you can't really say that you gave picking, storage auctions, whatever, a shot unless you actually did it for six months. Because three months is just going to give you preliminary data of what you're doing. Because number one, you don't know what you're doing. So there's going to be a ton of mistakes. So you stick through that first 90-day period. Then you learn from your mistakes. Then you apply your newfound knowledge, which if you quit, goes to waste. Then the second 90 days, it's like, oh, okay. And then you can start trending what works for you in your area with your business. And eBay is like that. You know, the people that I knew that I would talk to, because I didn't really talk to too many people on the power seller board, because I used to call it the whining seller board. There's a few people I talked to and we would trade secrets and 
everybody that was successful was data junkies. They were all about the metrics. They were always researching, looking for ways to improve their business. Because for one point, eBay was just like, you could just throw some shit up there and make money. It was like that. It's no longer like that. It's not going to happen. You've got to have a plan unless you know, you're know doing one-off, two-offs, or you're just selling stuff at your house you don't really care about making the most margin. But learn to crawl inside your business and also treat your business like a business. As many people say they have a business, but they treat it like a part-time girlfriend. You know, you don't get everything that the wife gets. Well, you know, if you're doing the game properly, that's how it should go. But that's a whole nother video. But essentially, you will get from your business what you put into it. And the reason I did this video, there's a lot of people who really think that they're working their eBay business properly. And they're not. Because the thing that scares you the most about your eBay business is the thing that you need to address and attack daily. Because there's a reason it scares you. Because it's either full of risk or it's going to bring up more problems. You're better off solving that problem than trying to run from it or downgrade your exposure to eBay. Because any way you look at it to grow your business, you're going to need money. Online sales is one of the best ways to organically grow your business. Because your business is making you money 24-7, 365. You can't do that with a store. A physical store. I mean, here's a little surprise for many of you. Our store was open one or two days a week. And the majority of our sales came from online sources. I've said this several times. And a lot of people have not absorbed that. And but there was a reason. Because stores open a certain amount of hours. You can advertise. You can bring people in. But once, you know, there's, there's certain hours that, bam, you know, people are just going to stop coming. You may get one customer or two customers. But it just isn't economically feasible to be open any longer because you're not going to make any money. That's worth paying the lights, the bills, the insurance, whatever. So, I'm telling you, learn to be a data junkie. You can make a lot of money using online resources and leads. And that was the difference between my storage auction business and 99 point something else of the storage auction businesses that were here in Georgia. Because I was pimping the hell out of online resources. Because... You know, once again, looking at the data, looking at the data. And also, this is going to sound, once again, insulting, but sit down and really think how much time you're wasting in your business doing shit that doesn't make you money. I want you to really, really, I mean, seriously, today, what are you doing in your business that does not make you money? Then take your knife and carve that shit out. And you'll be surprised, I'm telling you, when you break your business down and you're really, really honest, you will be shocked at how much crap you do that does not earn you money, but it makes you feel productive. It makes you like, yeah, I'm working my ass off of it, but it's not, to me, quantitative work. It's busy work. And sometimes, don't get, me, don't get it twisted, there's things you have to do that are not going to generate money, but they will work toward that aim or support that aim. But what I'm saying is, I've seen it. And, you know, a lot of times people get mad at me because, you know, they'll call me or whatever and my phone is off, my email is off because if I'm writing, I know me. If I get that ding on the phone or whatever, whoo, what's, and I'm distracted. So I cut out the distractions and that's how I actually get stuff done. All right, so hopefully you can pull something from this that will help you with your eBay business and understand 4th of July is coming up. Um, back to school, actually, let me just... Bam. I, I'm going to touch on this, probably do a whole video. Whatever day that your kids in your school district start to go back to school, two to four weeks after that date, you're going to see your online sales do this. During the summer, parents are stressed the hell out. Summer camp, soccer, baseball, vacations. That stuff actually sucks a lot of money from online sales into other online sales because you know other people are getting that money. It's going to the daycare. It's going. It's going here. But once the little kiddos go back to school, a lot of money's freed up and people start buying again. This is the time to stack your inventory for that time period because once again, two three weeks after they go back to school, you're going to see this arc. Then we're going to run into the holidays. Then we're going to run into tax season. You need to prepare for that stuff now you need to start working on it now because what's going to happen you're going to get in that time period and you're going to run out of inventory then you're going to have to go out there and pay de facto high demand inventory prices 
when you really wouldn't have had to if you prepared for it during the summer. Because right now, the deals are freaking bananas. Right now, they're bananas. You know, the economy for some people is getting better. Folks are getting jobs. They're kind of dropping off the auction trail. You know, they're not picking. There are deals. There are deals. There are deals. And for the smart person who's a really smart squirrel, you're going to be putting all kind of nuts up in your cheeks because you know it's coming. If you live long enough, December is coming. If you live long enough, January, it's coming. And you have to prepare for it now. And that's a big thing. You have to learn how to do long-range planning for your business. Long-range or maybe short-term. You know, six. What are you going to be doing? You know, six months. We're going to be here, and how do we prepare for it? In a year, you need to do that stuff, even in your small business, because it will kill you to be unprepared. And also, another tip: if you're doing Amazon and you're selling toys, put as many freaking toys as you can up there now to develop your seller reputation before the holidays. Because if you don't, they're going to go. Kh you don't have enough experience to be selling toys, so we're not going to let you sell toys during the highest toy demand period of the year. That's right. No, you cannot sell any toys, but after December 26, we'll let you sell toys again. <laughs> the first time that happened to me, I was pissed. I was like, you got to be kidding me. So, once again, this is about preparation. It's about preparation. Hopefully you got something out of that. All right, this is Glennon. We're making money. We're storage unit auctions.